Hi guys, this is Gregor von Personas and today is a video that I've been meaning to do for quite a while and it's about the settings folder in Studio One. Many users aren't even aware that the settings folder exists, but this is the place where all of your customized options and preferences in Studio One are being stored. It's a great idea to back up this settings folder for future Studio One installations because it includes your browser appearance settings, your controller mappings that you might have for plugins and stuff like that, anything that you can think of, IO configurations, your last stored Windows positions and much more. So without any further introduction, let's talk about the most important settings files in this folder that you should definitely be aware of. So let's get the first question out of the way. How do we even get to the settings folder? The easiest way to access the settings folder is directly from Studio One, the help menu item, and then click on open settings folder. This is gonna open up a new macOS finder or Windows Explorer window that's taking you to the location of the settings folder. So there's no need to navigate to it manually. You might be shocked at first because there's a ton of settings files inside of this folder, but we're just gonna talk about the most important ones here that you should know about. So I'd say let's start from the bottom of the list here and look at Windows state.settings first. What does that do? Well, Windows state.settings essentially contains all of the window adjustments that you might have made in Studio One. So for instance, as you can see, I like to have my mixer console embedded in the song window. I could also decouple it, of course, and have an entirely separate window. This is great if you have a second screen and stuff like that, but I like it embedded. And I also like the tunnels to be a bit wider instead of so narrow. All of these kind of settings would be saved in the Windows state.settings file. Also, whether my track inspector was expanded or not, if my browser was opened or not, all of these kind of settings would be set in this file. Next up is user.keyscheme. This is very straightforward. This file simply contains all of your currently set keyboard shortcuts. So if you have any customized keyboard shortcuts, which I have a ton of, this would be stored in this very file. Of course, you can also just export and import your keyboard shortcut settings straight here from the preferences menu, but this settings file determines which keyboard shortcuts are active as you're launching Studio One. Moving on, the next one in the list is user.color scheme. And this file contains all of the appearance preferences that you might have adjusted in Studio One. So as you can see, I don't have the default look. I like my Studio One colors customized and it's so great that Studio One allows us to do this in great detail. So just go to Studio One preferences, general and appearance and start tweaking it to your heart's content. And all of these settings that you make here are stored in user.color scheme. Once again, you can also store and load presets completely independently from the settings folder, but the user.color scheme file determines which of your color schemes is going to be active as you're launching the application. The next one is a major settings file because it contains 90 to 95% of the preferences that determine how Studio One works, all of your preferences almost, and that is Studio One.settings. This includes, for instance, your input and output configurations that you have set as a standard for new songs. It also includes uh, your track and channel options as well as pretty much all of the advanced preferences that you're going to find under Studio One Preferences and Advanced. So everything that you customize here is stored in this .settings file and also certain browser elements. So the Studio One browser loop tab, the kind of tag searches that you have prepared here, or the files tab, folder locations that you might have pinned. All of this is being remembered in Studio One dot settings. The next dot settings file might be very interesting, particularly to the regular viewers of mine who might have seen my episode on customized plugin folders because plugin presentation dot setting saves all of your plugin manager and instrument effects browser settings that you have stored. So for instance, if you made your customized plugin folders, if you've sorted your plugins in a certain way, or if you've chosen to favorite or hide certain plugins, all of this is being stored in plugin presentation settings. Just one more settings file to go before we look at the settings folders within the settings folder. Yeah, a little bit of inception going on here, but stick with me. So the next one is musicdevices.settings. This is very straightforward. Musicdevices.settings is simply a representation of your preferences that you have set in the external devices menu. 
This means that all of your input and output routings that have to do with MIDI and your controllers and keyboards is being stored and recalled with this file. So that's all the important settings files that you need to know about. Now let's talk about three major settings folders that are significant. The first one being the user devices folder. That's very straightforward also. So you might know in Studio One preferences and external devices, you're able to add your own keyboard instrument and control surface devices. And if you do so, this will show up in your user devices folder. And that's pretty much all there's to it. The surface data folder contains all of the control link assignments that you've mapped for your controllers and plugins. So for instance, I have a couple of my MIDI controllers here where I spend quite a bit of time on, you know, creating individual plugin mappings. And all of these are being stored in the surface data folder. The final folder that we need to talk about is only relevant if you have many third-party plugins. That's the X64 folder. The X64 folder contains many of the files that are related to the plugin scanner that you see upon startup. The plugin scanner tells Studio One which of your third-party plugins are installed, approved, safe to use, or block listed. And if this information is already there inside of the X64 folder, this allows Studio One to start up much faster compared to the first initial scan of your entire plugin library. As you can see, it's great to know about the settings folder. There's some really significant files there. And especially if you do a reinstallation or you're migrating to a new system, then it's a great idea to simply grab the entire settings folder and replacing it on your new installation if you want to keep your Studio One preferences, appearance settings and so forth exactly like they were on your old system.